I have 37 years experience working as a hairstylist and a hair colorist, and I also work with a couple of the big hair color brands in research and development. No, your eyes are not deceiving you. Keep on watching as we get into testing Clairol's natural instincts, and you might just be shocked. <gasps> Hello and welcome to the world of Craigers. That's me, I'm Craig, and this is my channel where we get into all things hair and sometimes a little bit of beauty. Box dye, what you might call box dye, what I call home hair colour. I had a video here on my channel, yes, that did rather well and lots of you enjoyed it. It did get a little bit spicy in the comments at times, but hey ho, that's YouTube for you, that's any social media platform for you. And I've had quite a few requests to test some of the most popular home use products. So I thought let's start off with a formula that I was really interested in and that's Clairol's Natural Instincts. Now, I will just give you a little sneaky peek into what's coming later in the video. I was impressed with this. I tested, I've already tested this. There is the conditioner inside this box, but I've already tested this, which you're going to see in a moment, in the full process of me putting it through its paces, if you like. Just a little bit of information. Clairol is owned by one of the biggest color houses in the world. Well, they manufacture their color, and that is Weller. Now, that might be a clue into what we're gonna get into later on, but I, you know, I'm gonna tell you, I was shocked, I was gagged, I was amazed, and, and I was kind of pleased as well. I'd just like to add here a little caveat that home colour, or what, what I call home colour, what you call box dye, is not the work of Satan. There are some fantastic formulas out there, we'll get into all of that later on, but colouring your hair at home does not replace going to a salon for lots of different reasons that are all in ads in editing it in this video so you can go and watch that I'll link it down below as well but that's enough of me introducing the video let's get on with the full process of testing out Clairol's natural instincts so let's have a look around the box and of course swatch it out a quick word about the plush on my finger I had a bit of an argument in the gym with a weight but I'm completely fine so we can see here blends away grey remember that for later on and lasts 28 shampoos of course that's up to 28 shampoos now what else do we have on here no ammonia or harsh scent it did smell absolutely divine when i used it as you will see in a second and i'm using a level five here which is medium brown that's because it's a really good control color to see how things are the packaging is recyclable which you would expect and let's have a look at what else is on the label here so healthy looking color that shines in only 20 minutes last 28 shampoos remember that's up to 28 depending on your hair type and it might last slightly longer no harsh root line that's because this is a demi-permanent color and here are some examples of what you can expect at different levels of natural starting point from my point of view as a hair professional i think the packaging is great it has all the information you need like some more ingredients here on the side they've got coconut oil and aloe vera then on the bottom you have a full ingredients list for all three components and just to draw your attention to this brilliant shine conditioner ingredients list a lot of you in the comments have said that you enjoy these and they make your hair shiny and that's because the ingredients list is really great there's dimethicone citric acid and lots of other great things to make your hair shine brilliantly so it's testing time and a reminder that I have never used natural instincts before but I do think these little tags here that you can tear off to remind you what you bought previously are very clever and a reminder to patch test we'll get into that later on so we have an instruction leaflet we have number two which is effectively the peroxide number one which is the color itself and then we have the tube of brilliant shine conditioner there she is. It's important to always start at the beginning. So I'm going to have a look at the instruction leaflet, which I think is brilliant, but I will tell you more about that later on. Oh, and I almost forgot there's a pair of gloves in here, but I won't be using those, but you must wear gloves when you're using any hair color at all. I have my own, so you'll see in a second. So I'm gonna be testing these on two different sorts of swatches. These are real hair. I have a level 10 swatch, which is the one that's on the left-hand side, and then on the right, I have the equivalent to around a level eight. Now I am making a joke of it here and I have mentioned it already, but please do wear gloves when you use any hair color at all. At the very least, you don't want your hands to be stained. Now I have my two swatches on two separate pieces of foil and I'm going to mix up the product. 
Now, this is where the mixing is really important. And I'm going to get very, not technical, but I'm going to get very serious for a second. I'm piercing the tube to open the tube because it's sealed. This keeps the colour fresh inside. Make sure you do that so that it's got a big enough hole to get the product out. And I'm squeezing all of the product into bottle number two. And you can see here the tube is almost completely empty. It's important to get all of number one into number two. Once the cap screwed back on firmly, you want to gently shake the product to mix the two components together. You don't want to be too violent or vigorous with your shaking. We'll get into that later on. Then snap the top of the cap off and then it's time to apply to both of the swatches. Now I'm using my fingers here so that I get a representation of you doing it at yourself at home. And I did find the product really easy to spread. As I said, it had a light fragrance and it wasn't tricky at all to get full saturation on both of the swatches. It's always important to apply plenty of product to get even saturation and once you've done so you want to dispose of the remaining product because it won't keep. The processing time here for Natural Instincts is 20 minutes so I'm going to set a timer and I would recommend that you always do set some kind of timer so you don't lose track of the time. Now we can see them both oxidising here. This is an oxidative demi-permanent colour and once they'd had the full 20 minutes it was time to rinse them off and we can have a look at the results. I almost forgot, of course, we have to use the Brilliant Shine Conditioner. Now, I was really impressed with this. I knew I'd like the formulation because I love a dimethicone-based conditioner, but it did make the swatches feel very soft. Right, are you ready? Here are the results. So on the left, we have the level 10 swatch, and on the right, we have the level 8 swatch. I think the results are gorgeous. They do remind me of something that we'll get into in a minute, a bit later on in the video, but I was really impressed with both of the swatches and all of the results. Right, back to me and let's get into it. So that was the process and what I consider to be a rather impressive, gorgeous, shiny, easy to use result, okay? So you've seen the whole process. I would just like to add very briefly at this point in the video that this is not sponsored, I bought that the box with my own money. It, I always have to get that into videos because I'm sure there are people that are watching this thinking, he's been paid to do that. Now, unfortunately, I haven't been paid to review the product. Shout out to Claire if you're watching this and you'd like to get involved. It, I just wanted to basically dispel a lot of myths. And that, that's what I talk about in the other videos that I talk about box dye. And I always do this because I don't call it box dye. I call it home hair color because I think that, you know, that it has been relatively demonized. Anyway, this video is not sponsored. I'm making it because I wanted to share with you my findings. And I will just add that I did mention earlier on there is something shocking that is coming up in this video. Very interesting. If you're a hair professional or if you colour your own hair at home, you're going to be very interested in that. So keep on watching. And that's not clickbait to keep you to keep you watching this. But first of all, what I'm going to do is share with you some top tips, like my five top tips for getting the best if you're colouring your hair at home. And if you're a hair professional watching this, these are all applicable to things that we do in salon. So first of all, it's something I say a lot, and that is to always follow manufacturer's guidelines. I just want to say a big up to Clairol, who put this together. If I was an alien and I'd never seen if I was an alien, I'd never seen them. So I'm sure some people think I am. I'd never seen a you know a home hair color before, and I got these instructions. They are so simple to follow. I had I have used a few other home hair colors um, throughout. I was recommending them to people, so I did a bit of research online throughout lockdown. Crikey, seems like another lifetime ago. And also when I'm called to hotel rooms late at night to colour people's extensions. Yes, I do some of that, but you don't find out about it because it's all very hush-hush. Um, I'm never going to call myself a celebrity hairdresser, but I do some fun things late at night in hotel rooms. That sounds bad. I have used uh, castings. I've used a few other products, some direct dyes that you buy from the drugstore, from the chemist. These instructions are amazing. They are absolutely amazing. They're easy to follow. But what I'm telling you this for is that it's so important that you look at this thoroughly. And if you're a hair professional, please follow the guidelines that these amazing chemists, big up to the chemists put together. So first of all, I just wanted to say, always get the instruction leaflet out, have a good read of it before you start doing anything to, you know, mixing anything up. It's super important. If you want to get the, and as you saw in the process video here, I followed it exactly. 
Um, and I just think that's super important to get the best out of any hair coloring, hair styling product as well. So fantastic instructions. Make sure if you're gonna do your hair at home that you always follow them. And if you're a hair pro, that you're following the guidelines of the manufacturers of the fabulous products that you are using. A serious point before we get into the rest of the video, and that is if you're going to use any sort of hair color, be it a pro product or an at-home product, you must, and you've not used it previously, you must patch test yourself. You can be sensitive to hair color, you can be sensitive to hair color that you've used before but haven't used for several years and you're coming back to it. You can be sensitive to a new product that you've never tried before. I don't colour anybody's hair that's new to the salon, that's new to me, or that hasn't been to me for over 12 months without patch testing them first. And I patch test people for each individual product I'm going to use. If I'm changing things around or using more than one product, then I have to patch test for everything I use. And you should too, it's important. Sensitivity to permanent hair colour or demi-permanent hair colour or any hair colour that's pigmented can be a really serious thing. Okay, that's over, I've got the serious bit over, let's get on with the rest of the video. Next up is something I've talked about before and it's something that applies to any hair colour that you're mixing up and we'll just be very brief on this one. When you add number one to number two, like the tube to the actual bottle or if you're in the salon and you mix up, you're a hair professional and you mix up colours in like applicator bottles, some of the stylists in the salon do. I generally don't tend to do that in salon but I do work with people that do and I know some brands like you to do that. Please don't shake anything very vigorously. You don't really need to shake products extremely vigorously. When you mix peroxide and hair colour, as, as Clairol's Natural Instincts is a demi-permanent colour, Shady Q Gloss is a demi-permanent colour, um, Dia Richess is a demi-permanent colour, I'm trying to think of other brands at the top of my head, there's so many different demi-permanent colours out there. They do contain peroxide, and when you're shaking up really vigorously, you are adding energy, energy because there is a slight chemical reaction with a demi-permanent colour. There's a whole playlist on here that's all about hair colour theory. So that goes into how demi-permanent colours work. This video would be too long otherwise and I'm always conscious of the time. So please don't shake things super vigorously because you might introduce too much energy and the colour might process differently. So mix it up, yes, make sure it's mixed thoroughly but no shaking like you're trying to shake it into next week. Make sense? Good. Very briefly before I forget to ask and we get to the outro and then the video is over and I've completely forgotten. If you're enjoying this video and you'd like it to become a series, then let me know in the comments and just to remind everybody watching this, hello, that I do reply to everyone. It's always met with a bit of shock from some people that, wow, you replied to me or you replied to me really quickly, but I do. You leave a comment and I will always get back to you. Not perhaps with a very specific formula, because I can't see you, but I will always reply. So just to reiterate, if you'd like this to become a series, can't test every single home hair colour in the land, because there's a lot and that would take me a lot of time. And I have a, a list of content as long as my arm, or much longer than my arm actually, of things I want to create and bring to my channel. But if you would like that, let me know in the comments. Next up is an application tip. And again, it's one I go through in my video, which is part of the series of how to get the best of, and there's a how to get the best of box dye. I know a lot of people hate it when I do that, Ooh. but I have to, because I don't use that word in my vernacular. There's a good word. And that is, if you find it tricky to use the applicator bottle that we've just spoken about, you can always use a bowl and a brush. And I will put my hand up and say, I did find the natural instincts, I found the actual texture of the product to be quite runny. That does make application easy, which is good. Uh, also found it very similar to something coming up in a second. Yes, I'm gonna share that with you. Uh, stay tuned. So you could squeeze the, once you've mixed the product up, squeeze it into, take the cap off, pour it into a bowl and use a bowl and a brush. A bowl and a brush is always my preferred method, especially if I'm doing a root application. That might not be the case for you. You might find it really easy to use the bottle, but that, and that's completely fine. What I will say is when color is layered on top of color, 
any sort of colour, demi-permanent colour, permanent colour. If you do overlap, then you can get um, a, an increase in depth, in opacity. So if you find it easier to use a bowl on a brush, you can pick one up at a drugstore or a local you know, hair supply place. You could even order one online. They're, they're very easy to get hold of. But you might find that easier than the applicator bottle. Apologies, the sun is going in and out. It is a, an, a late spring day here in the UK. Yes, I think it's going to rain again later. Next up, we talked about it briefly when we talked about the instructions, but processing times. You must follow the processing times that are on those fantastic instructions that I showed you earlier on. It's really important. I would set aside the time, the processing time, so that you're you know, and I know that some of you might leave it on longer and get great results, and some of you might leave it on less and get great results, but really and truly, you want to follow the processing times that any brand gives you for any hair colour, whether it's a pro line or whether it's an at-home line. There isn't really that much difference. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> and the reason because no hair colour stops working. People will tell you that hair colour has a built-in clock a built-in, well, not wearing my watch, a built-in clock, and that it stops working. That's not true, that isn't true. The process slows down, the oxidation process slows down, and Clairol Natural Instincts does have an oxidizing, an oxidative effect. So if you leave it on for longer, it will get slightly deeper and it will get slightly more opaque. You might get slightly more coverage. If you have you know, more gray hair, it does uh, claim to give you uh, coverage blending on gray hair. So you might get slightly more coverage, but please do. If you've never used it before or you're using a different shade or you, you know, you're switching from a different brand, whatever brand you're using, always follow the processing times carefully the first time you use it. So top tip number five, as you saw from my swatches, insert swatches here, as you saw from my swatches, the results are quite translucent, which I personally love. I just think, you know, I think the results are great. I was really impressed with the performance of the colour. It, you know, it started to oxidise quickly. It was, I enjoyed the texture as we've already gone through all of those things. But the results are very translucent. So this is a top tip if you are trying to blend or cover grey hair. And I will just say that if you want a very opaque, very dense, very solid result, Clairol's Natural Instincts is not for you. You need to use a permanent hair colour. You know, this is a demi-permanent colour that places colour on the surface and slightly under the cuticle of the hair. It's a lot more technical than this, but that's what it does. So if you want a very opaque, very deep, very dense result, you need to use a different sort of product, a permanent hair colour really. But if you like that translucent result and you have grey hair, then I would probably suggest, and I can't speak for every single one of you, I do get a lot of, I get a lot of comments about people saying, can you give me a formula for this? Can you give me a formula for that? I've got this and I want that. And I can't really, I'm afraid I can't really help you that specifically because I can't see you and there's so many nuances to it. And you say you want to be a red copper blonde. Well, what you think is a red copper blonde and what I think is a red copper blonde are two very different things. And there's something that need, that's something that needs to be done through a consultation where I sit down with somebody as I do in the salon or on a session job all the time. It's impossible to do it remotely. But what I will say is if you do have grey hair and you want to blend that or get as much coverage as you can, if you are very grey, you know, say maybe over 50%, 60%, 70%, then I would perhaps drop down one level. So I was testing a level 5N, so I might suggest that you would use a level 4N because the results of the natural instincts are very translucent. Everyone is different in individual. If your hair is more porous, if you think your hair is more porous, then I would say don't do that, you know, I, because I, I can't be that specific, but that is my finding. If I was using this as um, a professional, a hair pro, as a colorist, and somebody had, you know, an awful lot of gray and I wanted it to blend more, I might drop down a level. So I hope that helps. Now, are you sat down? Let's get into this. Now, if you've got this far to this part of the video, thank you very much. I really appreciate all of your support and I appreciate you watching my content. I love putting it together and my followers, my followers, my subscribers, you are all amazing. And it means so much to me to be here on my channel and to be, a, be able to help people. The comments that some of you leave are just amazing and they fill my heart up. And I'm, all, I'm here to help everybody have the best hair that they can possibly have. 
But enough of me getting emotional, totally emotional. Let's pop these on the screen. Yes, these. Now, hopefully this will prove a point. Because I am, I get fed up on social media platforms of people basically demonising home hair colour. Some people can't get to the salons and they're still on the screen. Some people can't get to the salons. Some people feel intimidated in the salons. Some people can't afford to go to the hair salon. It's all good in my book. I just want people to have the hair that they want to have, full stop. This is the ingredients list for Clairol's Natural Instincts. This is the ingredients list for Wella Colour Touch, a, a product that's been around a long time, a product that I actually helped to launch about 35 years ago, goodness me, when I was a very, very young stylist and I came to London and, and came, went to the Weller studio at the time and helped to launch it. Take a close look at those ingredients. Yes, you're not wrong, they're very, very, very similar. Some of the ingredients, as you get to the bottom of the ingredients, this the top ingredients are all exactly the same. As you get to the further down, some of them are in a slightly different order and those ingredients would be very small. You know, there are very, the, the further you get down an ingredients list, the less amount of that ingredient there is. But they're almost exactly the same. Which proves the point, and I'm not gonna be smug because that's not becoming, but it proves the point that really the difference is with home hair colour is you're not getting a hairstylist to apply it, you're not getting the experience of going to a salon, which some people might not want, and that's completely understandable and that's fine. You're not getting a you know custom formula, you're not getting several different things together, you are getting one box of product that's pre-mixed for you to use yourself and to apply yourself. But the actual formulas, there really isn't that much in it. So, you know, it was interesting doing the research in this video, and I do a lot of research for a video like this, as well as testing the product, because it's important that I give you the right information. But let's remember that when it comes to formulas of pro products and home use products, there really isn't much in it at all. So that's it for our look at Clairol's Natural Instincts. And the, the long and the short of it is I'm impressed. I think it's a really great product. I'm glad that I tested it because if I ever get stuck in a field with someone's roots to do that's, that's about to shoot a commercial, I'll know exactly what, I, what it is that I can go and buy from the, from the local drugstore slash chemist. If you're a hairstylist and you've just watched this, then, you know, and you're somebody that has perhaps derided you know, home hair colour in the past and, and you might have had a client that's coloured their own hair and you thought, you know, that's a terrible thing to do, then I hope that this has helped you understand that there really isn't much in it. And if you do colour your hair at home and it's something you've done for a long time and you're getting great results, I hope that this video has backed you up. Or if you're thinking of colouring your own hair for the first time, I hope this has helped. If it has done any of those things, then you know exactly what to do. I have a YouTube, no, that's this is my YouTube, I have an Instagram, I have an Instagram, and the name for that is on screen. Now, it's not the world of Craig, it is Craig's world of hair, just to make that very clear, because people are following me on my personal Instagram, and there's no hair over there, so you want to you see the one that's full of hair, don't you? Yes. A huge thank you to everybody that's got to the end of the video, thank you for watching, you all take lots of care, and I'll see you all in the next one.